Well, I just want to put this out as kind of a warning because I'm not even going to get into the political subject of global warming. Does it exist? Does it not exist? Global climate change. I already got my opinion on it, but I'm going to state to you this as a warning to the people up into New Jersey, New York area, Boston, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, and not well, Pittsburgh, I guess, Philadelphia. Um, that global warming is not going to come to your area of the country anytime soon. <laughs> you know, I know there's, you can argue this back and forth, and I'm not going to get into that type of stuff right now, but I'm going to say specifically for the Northeast United States, you're going to have a fake-out winter this winter. It's going to start out warm, and I've been watching, you know, even the major weather channels out that are out there, they're all talking about the, the the El Nino effect is going to keep the cold air masses at bay from coming down from Canada, and that Siberian Express will be held back. But as the El Nino weakens, which will be sometime in January, from the beginning of January to the end of January, there's going to be a radical departure from the way the winter starts out in New Jersey, especially. New Jersey, New York City, um, Buffalo, you really don't know because of the lake effect. We'll talk about Philadelphia, Boston, New Haven, Connecticut, whatever, you know, Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, it's going to radically be different from the beginning of the winter. So you're actually probably, they're expecting a colder than usual winter. Um, now, I'm going to say something else about we live in a technological age whereby, you know, all your heating and HVAC systems, heating and and ventilation and air conditioning systems are all electronically controlled today. Um, the biggest danger, I think, for people is if there's a power outage and there's a lot of snow and the emergency crews can't get the power back on quickly enough and it's 24 hours, 36 hours, or 48 hours and you don't have power. Now, I'm not saying this is a guarantee. This, this is like... Forecast or forecast. Um, I will state this, though, that there's other people that are saying there's going to be many ice age coming that's going to be on par with the 400-year ice age. And it's really, it's it's kind of started the last couple years, just the very, very beginning of it. But you're going to really start feeling the effects between 2018 and 2020. But even this year, you're probably going to, you should be getting faked out pretty bad. Um... The West Coast is going to seem warm. That's It's going to be a repeat of last year. The Northeast is going to get more than likely hammered, probably all into the mountain ranges and things down into Tennessee, North Carolina, even into Georgia mountains. California probably will be hot and dry. That's, that is not the exact consensus of everybody, but generally speaking, in a nutshell, as a concise, uh, you know, abbreviation of what many people are saying, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, you're talking about a lot of above-average snow. Probably, it's difficult to say because forecasts are what they are. How could they say? Now, I'll say there's reason why behind this. What the reason is, and what they know factually already is that Siberia is having close to or record snows, Siberia, Russia. And when there's a lot of snow cover in Siberia, that means there's a lot of cold air in that area, common sense, uh, because the snow reflects the sun. It also keeps the whole um, the air colder that's surrounding where the snow cover. And what's keeping that air, because what we have is what we call the Siberian Express. It comes down. Um, f- from the North Pole through Canada, but it originally originates in Siberia. And they call it the Siberian Express. Maybe you hear it sometimes on these weather stations. But it's being held back, back right now by El Nino because of the currents of going across the bottom of the country from the warm water in the Pacific. Um, I'm not going to argue about global warming one way or the other, but I'm just saying that you know, maybe in California it's going to look like global warming this year, but in the very, very populous major metropolitan cities in New Jersey, New York, 
Connecticut, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, like Philadelphia, um, you're more than likely going to get hammered pretty bad this winter. And what I am putting this out for is not so much to argue, because I already have my opinion on global warming. I don't think it's legit, but let me say this. I, you know, I think this forecast, it's not coming from global warming advocates or global warming detractors or whatever. You know, it's not coming from that. It's actually coming from, you know, established weather people. The Northeast is going to get a very warm winter in the very beginning. But overall, the winter is going to be below normal snow in, in temperature and snowier than average. And it's going to make up for lost time, more to make up for lost time in the second two-thirds of winter. So that means there's going to be some major problems. And it's not so much about, yeah, I guess it could be a problem if you're stuck driving in your car or something. But the real problem to me, danger, is if you're stuck inside your house and the power goes out. Back in the old times, you know, when people had coal stoves, they had home heat, fuel heat, heating, uh, sometimes the even the furnaces, even if they were natural gas, they weren't so electrically dependent. You could do things with the pilot and adjust stuff and turn things on and get things going. Today, everything is electronic. There's microchips and computers, and it all runs on electricity. So if the electricity goes out, your heat goes out. Now, that could be a problem with your water pipes, but it could be a problem with you, too. Um... So I'm really putting this out that I think a lot of people would be smart to get something like um, older technology as a backup. And you might not need it this year. I mean, I'm not saying that this is going to definitely happen. But um, older technology as a backup might be a very smart thing to have. Um, It could be dangerous if you're using it the wrong way. Uh, I'm talking about kerosene heaters or oil heaters or something uh, they used to use these perfection oil heaters, um, which would use kerosene or fuel oil or even the ultra-low sulfur diesel oil with 100% cotton wick. And you have to keep a window open, cracked, you know, for ventilation. Um, and you have to watch the thing. But, you know, if the electricity does go out because of high winds, ice, snow, and, you know, the utility companies aren't going to just restore it immediately. Um, you're going to be SOL, you know, just stuff out of luck, right? So what I say is that, you know, it may be a very smart idea to, uh, and you know I'm from New Jersey, because I say idea versus idea, whatever the hell people say in other parts of the country, um, to get something like this, the old technology, because the old technology always works. It's not something like it's the best <laughs> for all every day. But, you know, if you have something like this and it keeps you warm and it keeps you some kind of light and you could cook on it and you have some cans of soup, uh, you know, that are, you know, on a shelf or something and you could put this on top of your heater and make some soup, you can make some tea, you can make some coffee, uh, you can melt some snow, (laughs) whatever, very carefully. You got to watch when you melt snow because it actually snow could burn if you try to do it too fast, believe it or not. I learned that in camping back when I was 10 years old, but that's true. Bur- snow can actually burn. So, But you can get water from snow. You just, just you know, you boil it up really good, <laughs> and then, then it's uh, pure, well, it's pure, pure water. Yeah. More, you know, assuming you have other problems like frozen pipes or something and you can't get water. Because, you know, there could be a lot of crazy problems that happen when you have in a, a power outage. And below freezing temperatures, and you got a good foot or so of snow, and it, some of the power outages is down due to high winds or ice or whatever. They're not going to, you know, the, the 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 utilities and all the emergency facilities, they're going to be overwhelmed. They're not going to say, hey, you know, ten minutes later, here I am. No, they're not going to do that because everybody's out there is going to be um, needing help at once. They'll be overwhelmed. Now, I'm not going to show any link about because I don't have anything to do with this. I bought, I actually have a kerosene heater from a long time ago. I bought it in Korea, as a matter of fact, back in 87. Uh, I just bought a perfection heater, uh, an antique, 
I don't know how old it is, from the 20s or the 30s. It works. <laughs> and I'm I'm not down in I'm not in a cold place, so I'm just using it for the, you know, for whole for heating once in a while, that type of stuff. I'm not in a cold place. Uh, but I am familiar with what goes on up there in New Jersey. I was up there in 95, 96, and I was not I was kind of curious about, hey, I haven't seen snow in a long time. And uh, I happened to go up there in 95 and 96 to northern New Jersey. And they had 104 or 105 inches of snow. It was the snowiest winter on record. I was like, damn, I had enough snow to last me a long time. But uh, the lights did not go out or anything like that. But uh, um, there is major reasons to predict this winter as soon as the El Nino drops off more that it will radically change from a small winter looks like it's look like a lame winter people are going to say this winter's nothing oh yeah i was wearing a you know a short sleeve shirt today to work or something i don't know plus it happened to be 60 degrees they're going to think it's nothing and it's going to change radically because the overall forecast and this is not from some conspiracy people or anything like that because i don't want to get into that kind of stuff even though I think global warming is a political agenda and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just telling you that in the Northeast, where it's a very, very populated area, it's going to be dangerous. That may not happen this year. We have power outages or something, but this is going to continue for a lot of years and get colder and colder, actually. Um, But even this year... It is definitely forecast by the major forecasters that the first part of this winter, maybe the first third, like your winter starts actually December 21st, 22nd, around that time, um, maybe it'll start changing in, right in the beginning of January, mid-January, end of January. But by that time, it's going to radically change over, and it's going to make up for lost time, and overall it's going to be a well below... Um, cold temperature winter, winter with well above snowfall. So, you know, just saying that, you know, that's not that in itself doesn't really mean that much. The problem is that with today's electronic, everything's electronic. Your furnace is electronic. I mean, everything out there is with the, if the power goes out, it's not like even. 40, 50 years ago. Everything is computer chips, electronic, and depends upon you having power to your house. If the power goes out in the wintertime, it could be major, major, major problems. So you might want to get a kerosene here. I'm not going to say where to get it. You know, or I'm not going to. I personally opted for uh, the Perfection which is no longer made. It's the old school stuff. It doesn't even have the tip over protect, protection or anything like that. But it's reliable as all hell. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's don't tip it over. It doesn't tip over that easy. I mean, you have to be, um, I don't know, a 40-pound dog has to be running pretty fast to tip that thing over or something. I mean, I guess it could happen, but it wouldn't happen that easy. Um, but having something like that, and you know, as long as you're careful, you're watching the, you know, watching when it's on. You crack a window, and you have enough fuel. It may save you from freezing your kazoobies off. Uh, it may save you from being hungry because you can't eat uh, frozen food. Maybe uh, you could cook on top of it, and it may save your house from having busted frozen pipes. So. Just something I want to put out here because I think a lot of people are going to be faked out in the initial winter. They're going to say, oh, it's not nothing. Nothing's going to happen. The last year was the only late year we had. We had a really cold winter last year and the year before. And hey, this winter's going to be nothing. Look at this. Look what's going on. It's, that's the way it's supposed to start. It's supposed to change over a lot for the reason I told you that the El Nino effect is going to drop off, which is going to allow that Siberian Express to come over. Already Siberia supposedly has record or near record snow, which means there will be a lot of cold coming over with the Siberian Express. It's hard to predict, but they're all predicting this. So you're going to get faked out, and if you're not prepared, 
you're screwed. So, you got warned anyway. So, anyway, that's all I want to say. And hopefully, um, good health. And if there's a winter storm out there and you're nice and cozy and warm and you got a nice kerosene heater going and stuff like that, maybe your neighbors will come over and enjoy your kerosene heater too. And they'll owe you a couple of favors later on in the summer. Maybe they'll mow your lawn for two weeks for free. I don't know, something like that. So hopefully everything will be safe and everybody will get along fine and there will be no problems. So stay prepared. Just do some minor things now.